Friday was a beautiful day uh, here. The tree in the front yard at the church uh, is in beautiful bloom. I took a picture uh, to post, and which I did, and then I typed a few thoughts regarding that. And that is that while the Lord has given us a beautiful building here, and there are many beautiful uh, houses of worship uh, around the world, we have to remember that the church is not the building. Uh, the church are the people who put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ uh, as their Savior. They're born again, and they meet in these buildings, and in some cases, caves, and uh, thatched uh, huts, and uh, thatch uh, lean-tos, and uh, forest, and and uh, fields and uh, buildings of all types around the world. Uh, the church uh, are the people who are born again, uh, called out from the Lord. And in, in that, I posted a passage from John chapter four, where Jesus uh, told the woman at the well, when she asked about where the proper place to worship was, that Jesus told her that neither in the temple she was referring to, nor in Jerusalem, uh, but uh, people need to worship the Lord in spirit and truth. Um, if we had not just recently preached from that passage several weeks ago, we'd have shared that passage with you again today. Uh, but that then reminded me of this beautiful psalm uh, in Psalm 84. Uh, the, over the top of verse 1, you'll see uh, some words. Uh, if they're in italics, they're not part of the Hebrew text, but these words that I'm about to read are part of the Hebrew text. Uh, to the chief musician upon Giddeth, a psalm for the sons of Korah. How amicable, amicable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. Thy soul, my soul longs, yea, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Yea, the sparrow has found a house and the swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her young, even thine altars. O Lord of hosts, my King, and my God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house, and they that will be praising thee, Selah. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, and whose heart are the ways of them, who passing through the valley of Baca make it a well, the rain also fills the pools. They go from strength to strength, and every one of them in Zion appears before God. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob, Selah. Behold, our God, O God, our shield, and look upon the face of thine anointed. For a day in thy house is better than a thousand, and I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield, and the Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, Blessed is the man that trusts in thee. Father, as we contemplate the words of this beautiful psalm this morning, we pray that you would speak to our hearts. We do pray, Lord, that you would help us to make a wise and proper application to our lives. And we pray for any who might be fear, filled with fear and anxiety regarding the pandemic, that they might put their trust in thee and that their hope might be in thee. And while, Lord, we do pray for our leaders, our government officials, our medical uh, workers, uh, we know that our hope is not in them, but our hope is in thee, Lord. So we pray, Lord, that you would uh, bless now our time together. In Jesus' name, amen. The basic theme of this uh, psalm is that the blessed person is the one who delights to worship God in his own house. Now, I didn't bring this to frustrate you. I'm going to share some things with you about this psalm that I hope will help you to appreciate uh, from the psalmist perspective uh, how much you're beginning to realize that the importance is of meeting together. Um, there is a, there's a lot of disagreement among the commentaries uh, regarding uh, who actually wrote this psalm. You'll notice over the top of it, it does not say who wrote it. It does say to whom it was addressed, the sons of Korah, but it doesn't tell us that it was written by Asaph or by David or uh, anyone. Uh, uh, some follow the idea that because Psalm 83 is a psalm of Asaph, that he would have been the author uh, many of the uh, commentators uh, do believe that it is a psalm of David, uh, but nevertheless, it, it remains anonymous. 
we do know uh, that the Holy Spirit is the one who uh, inspired the human author, whoever that person might be, uh, to write these beautiful words for our benefit and for our edification. Uh, many believe that this particular psalm is a, a psalm of ascent. Um, if you travel from Jericho up to Jerusalem, uh, Jericho is below sea level. Uh, Jerusalem is very high in the mountains. Uh, it was a long walk uh, or a long ride on a donkey or a horse or, or something or a cart uh, to get there. And many believe that this is a psalm of ascent, meaning that as the pilgrims uh, worked their way toward Jerusalem to ce celebrate one of the great feasts, uh, that this was the psalm, and they were kind of getting themselves motivated uh, for worship when they arrived uh, to Jerusalem. We can't say with certainty that that's what it is, uh, but that is what many of the commentators believe. There, we do know from the scriptures uh, that the Jewish people were required to go to Jerusalem three times a year to celebrate Passover, Pentecost, and the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, one of the blessings that we have on normal circumstances is we can go uh, every week. Uh, normal circumstances, we can go uh, every time the doors are open, but in those days, you can imagine, they didn't have cars, they didn't have trains, they didn't have planes, and so uh, this was a practical aspect for the Lord set up for them to come three times a year. We know that they were supposed to come based on uh, Exodus chapter 23, verse 14 and 17. Uh, three times you shall keep a feast unto me in the year, three times in of the year all the males shall appear before the Lord God. Again, in Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 16, three times in a year shall all the males appear before the Lord uh, your God in the place which he shall choose in the feast of the unleavened bread and the feast of weeks and in the feast of tabernacles and they shall not appear before the Lord empty, meaning that's when they would bring their gifts uh, and their offerings. The Bible, uh, the Believer's Bible Commentary writes some very uh, applicable words regarding the church. It says, it can also be applied, of course, to the Christian today who is somehow prevented from attending the meetings of the local fellowship. And so that's one of the reasons I think it's very applicable uh, to us today, I would agree with his comments. Uh, he continues, he eats his heart out uh, to be back with God's people as they meet to worship the Lord. Um, and then he continues, he says, but the best application is that of a godly pilgrim who is uh, downright homesick for heaven. We have to remember that this world is not our home. Uh, we are just passing through, as the hymn writer said. And so we're going to kind of look at this from the standpoint as we would all like to be here, uh, and yet because of uh, restrictions, uh, it's advised against us not to do this. Uh, this is indeed the third week that we've not been able to meet together as a church family. Uh, I hope you've taken advantages of the uh, sermon notes that's been sent to you by email or through the mail uh, to use those for family devotions. Men, we'd encourage you to take the opportunity to use these notes uh, to lead your family in uh, Bible study and in worship, um, and that everyone would, uh, you, can, you can do one section one day, another section another day. You don't have to do it all in one day, uh, but uh, use them as uh, best you can. We'll continue to send them out for those who want to receive them. I don't wish to fill your email boxes up with things you might not want. Um, to the best of my knowledge, no one in our church family has uh, contracted uh, COVID-19. But one of the things I do want to let you uh, make you aware of is that uh, this area has not peaked. Uh, and if you've been looking at the maps uh, that you can access from the link on the COVID-19 page on our church website, you'll see that it's kind of working its way down this direction from Upper Darby. Uh, be much in prayer for Pastor Steve Lyon and his church family. They are in Upper Darby. I've not had a chance to communicate with him personally. Uh, hopefully this week I'll, remind, I'll remember to call him. Uh, but uh, that is where the worst of it is in Delaware County. But it is working its way down this direction. So please be careful. Uh, keep your social distances. Wash your hands frequently. Uh, and uh, follow the advice of the health care providers. Uh, we do miss you. Uh, and we miss worshiping with you in God's house here in Ogden, Pennsylvania. 
And while it is true that we can worship God anywhere at any time, you've heard that many times from people who don't like going to church, it is also true that God makes us social people and that he delights when his people gather together to worship through songs, prayers, and the study of his words. Um, in the webinars that, uh, one of the webinars that I watched, uh, they recommended not singing. Uh, there's a time delay and we actually tried it yesterday. Uh, it definitely was a problem. Uh, so uh, as we improve our skills and perhaps some of our equipment, uh, we might be able to sing. Bill offered to come over and play the organ for you. Uh, it was very gracious of him. But again, the music just doesn't transfer through this medium uh, the way it does since it's a live production. Uh, it certainly could be taped and then done, but then we have to deal with uh, uh, light broadcast licenses and, and other things when we get into that thing. So our text, uh, the first stanza is verses one through four. Uh, this psalm is broken up into three stanzas. And you'll notice at the end of verse four, you have the word Selah. And at the end of verse five or eight, you also have the word Selah. That is the indication uh, musically uh, in the Hebrew text that that's where the stanza break is. And so the first stanza, verses one through four, uh, how amicable uh, are thy dwellings, O Lord of hosts. You per perhaps heard the song, uh, and this is why I wanted to try the music, how lovely is thy dwelling, O Lord of hosts, thy dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. Um, there, there should be a desire by anyone who loves the Lord, who's born again, to meet regularly, consistently in the Lord's house uh, on the Lord's day to worship with God's people. The psalmist here says how amicable, and I have problems pronouncing that word. Uh, the songwriter changed it to how lovely uh, is thy dwelling. The actual meaning of the word is how well loved are your dwelling places. Do you love being with God's people? Do you love being in God's house? He says, how well loved are your tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. Behind me, you can see the artist's conception of the tabernacle of Israel. Uh, we have the tabernacle that Moses built surrounded by the tents of the Israelites. Uh, and this was the focal point of their worship and of their guidance there. The tabernacle uh, basically is a dwelling place. It's a more mobile tent. Uh, and basically, you'll find that it's not too common anymore, but there was a time when a lot of churches were referred to as tabernacles. Um, and some of, the, some of those churches have since changed their names because they realized the people in the community didn't understand what that was. But a tabernacle is a meeting place. Uh, and so the house of God, the churches, the buildings, that is, are the places where God's people meet uh, to worship him together. Uh, altars. Uh, there was two altars in the tabernacle. Uh, you had the brazen altar in the front yard uh, before the sacrifices were placed. And then you had the altar of uh, incense uh, inside uh, the holy place uh, upon which uh, incense was, was, was placed. Now, if this passage refers to the temple in Jerusalem and and if it does, then it's certainly not Davidic authorship. Uh, but there would have been more altars there. The, tab, the, tab, the temple in uh, Jerusalem had many more uh, uh, altars available. And so the whole point here that the psalmist is trying to make is that he longed uh, to be in the dwelling place, the manifest dwelling place of God on earth. He refers to the fact that his desire uh, was to be in the presence of the Lord. Now, we all know that God is omnipresent. We all know that God is everywhere at the same time. And yes, we can worship God anywhere. But he longed to be in the manifest presence of God among God's people so that he could worship together and enjoy the fellowship of worshiping together. That's why in verse 2 he says, My soul longs, my soul longs, my soul yearns, yea, even faints for the courts of Jehovah. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Yea, the sparrow has found a house and the swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her young. Even thine altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. 
Blessed are they that dwell in thy house, and they that be still praising thee, Selah. The desire uh, to be with God. To be in the courts of the Lord is to be with the living God in verse 1. The Lord of hosts, uh, this expression is repeated in verse 1 and in verse uh, 3 and in verse 12. It is uh, the Hebrew expression uh, Jehovah Sabaoth. Um, it refers to the power of the Lord with his armies. Uh, there's a great hymn from uh, regarding the crucifixion that says Jesus could have called 10,000 angels. Uh, and so we know that that's not even uh, probably the right number, but uh, the, he is indeed the Lord of hosts. He is the Jehovah God, Jehovah Sabaoth, of the Lord of the armies of heaven, um, which brings me to a point, just as an aside, uh, we are not in the tribulation. Uh, I've had some people reach out to me and say, hey, are you sure we're not in the tribulation? No, we are not in the tribulation. Uh, the tribulation does talk about pandemics that will destroy one third of the earth's population. Um, but this is not what that is. But what this does show me, and I think shows other, should show others, is how easy it will be for that to happen if people uh, don't follow proper protocols and you found how cooperative many people are based on the news reports. Uh, there is actually one uh, video that I watched of just uh, about Fort Lauderdale. They, they, they tagged everybody's phone number that was on the beach in Fort Lauderdale, and then they time-lapsed them how they spread up to the Northeast and out to, uh, toward the Mississippi River area. Now you just multiply that times all the beaches in Florida, and you can see how, how easy things get spread with this. But, our focus is on God, not on the pandemic. He is the Lord God, verse 11. He is Jehovah Elohim. That puts both the two most common names together for the Lord. Uh, he is the personal God, the I am that I am, and he is the Elohim. He is the one who said, let there be light, and there was light. He is the one who molded, who created the dirt and, and the earth and all that is therein in the heavens. And then he took that dirt and molded a man and breathed into him the breath of life. He is the one who is protecting us. Uh, he is referred to simply as Jehovah uh, in verse 11 without any other uh, ad adjectival descriptions. And in verse 2, he's referred to as the living God. Now, this is uh, a little bit different than the other one with the Elohim. Uh, Elohim is a plural form of this particular word. Elohim is showing the power of God and also allows for the triunity of the, uh, of the New Testament revelation of the triunity of God. But when you find it in this form, it's emphasizing that Jehovah, he is the God who's alive. He is the God who is alive. He is not a God made with men's hands. Uh, he is not a God that we create and then bow down to he is the living God. Um, in verse 3, he is referred to in the English text as my king and my God. Let me ask you this morning, who is your king? Uh, many years ago, there was a gospel tract that used the idea of a throne. And uh, it presented the challenge of a person to consider who's sitting on that throne, uh, ourselves or the Lord God of heaven. Uh, I would encourage you to make sure that the Lord God of heaven, Jesus Christ, manifest in the flesh, is the king of your life. Not only your king, but your God. Uh, we need to understand that the Lord said, we shall not make any graven images before us. We shall not have any other idols set before us. An idol is anything that we put in front of God. And we want to make sure that as we have this time to, um, a lot of free time, use it for Bible study if you can, use it for other productive things, but ask yourself some serious questions. Is Jesus Christ the king of my life? Is Jesus Christ my king? If he's not, you can simply pray a simple prayer and ask the Lord to become king of your life, to put him first and recommit. Perhaps you've done this before and perhaps you need to rededicate your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. One of the wonderful things about our God is he allows uh, U-turns. Uh, he is referred to as uh, Elohim, the powerful one, in verses 3, 7, 9, and 10. And then he's referred to as the God of Jacob, Elohim uh, Jacob. And so here we find that 
he is the God of sinners. Jacob means the weak one, the supplanter, the trickster, and yet God was not ashamed to identify himself with Jacob. God chose Jacob in his sinfulness. God revealed himself to Jacob in his sinfulness. Uh, Jacob repented, and Jacob became a follower of the living God. And God then changed his name to Israel, a prince with God. But the fact that if we find here in verse 8 that he is the God of Jacob means that even in our weakness, he is still our God. Even in our sinfulness, he is still our God, and we can turn to him. And so we find that the blessings, uh, the blessed person is the one who delights to worship God in God's house, and this will not last forever. We will be back worshiping together. I do not know when. Uh, the president is obviously being optimistic, uh, but it may be the rest of this month. Since it hasn't peaked in our area yet, I do not know. But we will try to uh, enhance our communication skills via uh, broadcast media, as well as other things to, to minister to you. But in verses four through, uh, uh, or verses five through eight, uh, we find some other great truths. Blessed is the man, verse five, whose strength is in you, and whose heart are the ways of them, who passing through the valley of Baca makes it a well, the ram also the rain also fills the pools. They go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appears before God. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Selah. We find here that uh, there is happiness. He says in verse 4, Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. Verse 5, Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee. And whose strength are you trusting? Are you trusting in the strength of the Lord? Are you, are you following the wise counsel of the medical uh, professionals that tell us to keep social distancing and things of that nature, to wash our hands frequently, uh, et cetera, to isolate ourselves so we get sick? Um, that brings happiness uh, by following the counsel of God, by following the advice of those who uh, know what they're talking about. People who live in God's house constantly sing his praises. And I would encourage you around your house, sing songs to the Lord, open up in praise. Uh, if the rest of the family doesn't want it, go to your bedroom, close the door and sing, sing to the Lord. Go outside, uh, sing to the Lord. In Psalm 23, 6, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Now, that's a metaphorical expression. That's a poetic expression, dwelling in the house of the Lord. Uh, obviously, uh, none of us sleep here. Uh, not, obviously, none of us eat our meals here all the time. But the idea is that this is a habitual part of our lives and that we frequent the house of the Lord whenever possible. And I would encourage you to use this opportunity to strengthen your devotional life, to strengthen uh, your prayer life, to strengthen your personal relationship with the Lord as well. And the idea of strength is that uh, God will give us the ability to do what we need to do. Um, we have a couple of young people in our church uh, that have been uh, running, young adults who have been running, 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 because they're preparing for a long distance run. And so, you know, they don't just say, I'm going to eat potato chips and watch TV for the next several weeks, and then one day go try to run a half marathon or a third of a marathon or something like that. No, they get ready for that to strengthen their body. The pilgrims had to walk this long, arduous journey uphill from Jericho all the way to Jerusalem. I can imagine some people at that time who may have had arthritis or may have had other physical limitations getting at the bottom and looking up at that, looking up at the top of that hill and says, I can never make it. I can never make it. But I used to run cross country uh, just for fun. And one of the things that I found that was very helpful was I would look down the road or up the hill and I would find a tree or a mailbox or something. And I would focus on that tree or that mailbox uh, as I ran up that hill or something like that. That helped me to have a perspective of I'm getting closer. If we keep looking down at our feet, if we keep looking behind us, 
if we keep looking at all the problems and the challenges, we'll never have the strength spiritually, emotionally, or physically to do what we need to do. So our strength draws upon focusing upon the Lord Jesus Christ, focusing upon the God of Jacob, focusing upon the Lord God of Israel. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5, the Word of God says, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. And so our sufficiency of our strength is in the Lord God of heaven. Again, Paul writes in chapter 12, uh, verse 9 of 2 Corinthians, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for you, my for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I... Uh, glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. We believe that Paul had a vision problem because of the bright light that when uh, the Lord Jesus Christ revealed himself to him on Paul's road uh, experience to Damascus, and that this may have created cataracts. We don't know. Uh, that's what the people speculate on or other eye problems. And Paul prayed three times for the Lord to remove this from him. Now, if anybody's going to get their prayers answered, you would think it'd be the Apostle Paul. And yet the Lord made it clear to him that he wanted him to have this problem so that his dependency would be on the Lord Jesus Christ. And by the way, on other believers. That's probably why Dr. Luke traveled with Paul to be his personal uh, attending physician as he ministered the gospel. He also had John Mark. He also had Barnabas. He also had Silas and others at different times. We are not islands. We need each other to minister uh, one to another in the ministry. So don't think that you can go this alone. You need to have strength both in God and in other Christian brothers. The Apostle Paul also said in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. And so maybe you're getting uh, feels like you can't bear anymore being stuck in the house. Uh, the uh, Department of Health recommends going outside. Just keep your distance from other people. Uh, do some gardening. They're recommending all kinds of things. Just don't get too close to other people. And then in verse 6, he tells us, who passing through the valley of, the ba valley of Baca, make it a well, the rain also fills the pools. The valley of Baca is, uh, it can be translated uh, as weeping. Uh, the valley was an arid place on the way to Jerusalem, uh, and it was, a, it was a tough part of the journey. And by that time, perhaps uh, their bones were hurting. Uh, Pastor Troy and I uh, moved some pianos with the help of someone else the other day. We moved a couple of uh, uh, desks around at church. Uh, you know, we're both feeling that a little bit. That's not something we do every week. Uh, and so if you're, you know, you're not uh, accustomed to running up a, a, a mountain uh, uh, every day and you come now one of three times a year to go up this, by the time you got this valley, you said, I can't take it anymore. Uh, people were crying. I'm sure some children were crying. And so what he basically says here is that God brings comfort uh, who passing through the valley of Baca make it a well and rain also fills the pools. God provides the, from the tears, but also from the rain, the nourishment that is needed to press on. And so let us remember that we can press on. Find creative ways to, to reach out to family and friends, to minister to them. Find uh, creative ways to reach out to lost people, to minister to them. That's why we put that gospel track on the church website. There are other gospel tracks on the church website as well that you can simply uh, copy, paste the link to someone and uh, share that with them. One writer says, the meaning of the expression, the valley passing through the valley of Baca, is that a man who finds his strength in God will never be without a well of comfort in a dry and barren land. God always provides. Um, one of the beautiful things about Psalm 1, blessed is the man that uh, walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. And the psalm goes on and talks about the great 
pr fruit production that comes from that. Now, what you have to understand is the word river there is not the Delaware River. It is not the Susquehanna River. It is talking about an irrigation ditch or a small stream where the farmer would plant the fruit trees right along the, there. So the, imagine being up in a plain, you're looking down and uh, 20 yards, 30 yards away from this uh, irrigation ditch or this little stream, there's just nothing growing. But all along the irrigation ditch and all along the little stream are these luscious fruit trees that God has planted in the midst of a spiritually dead and dying world, and they can produce fruit. And so in the midst of this isolation, in the midst of this pandemic, you can still produce fruit if you look to God and focus on him and how to do so. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come to the Lord. We come to the Lord through prayer. We come to the Lord through reading his word and, and finding out what he wants us to do. But then he also, in verse 9, talks about the protection that the Lord provides. He says, Behold, O God, our shield, and look upon the face of thine anointed. The Lord will protect those. Nobody is going to die from this unless the Lord has said this is the day they're going to, be, they're going to die. You need to understand that. It doesn't matter what you're doing, where you're doing. It doesn't mean we should be foolish or careless or anything like that. Uh, but we need to understand that the Lord is the one who chooses the time and the place and the day that we die. And so don't be fearful, but remember that the Lord God is our shield. And he looks upon the face of his anointed. Uh, the anointed here is probably the nation of Israel. Uh, God had anointed them to be the missionary force to reach the world around them at that time, and they failed. Well, today the church is the missionary force. Let us not fail God as Israel did. Let us make sure that we focus on being the lights to the God who is the shield who, of those who put their faith in him. In Genesis chapter 15, verse 1, the word of God says, after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Well, we know how the Lord protected Abram. We know how the Lord blessed Abram, both in a, in a famine, uh, in, a, in a heavy uh, drought time. His descendants prospered uh, by the time that Jacob got there. And so God will protect you as well. In Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 29, the word of God says, Happy are you, O Israel, who is like who is like unto me, O people, saved by the Lord and the shield of thy help. And who is the sword of thy excellency? And thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee, and thou shalt tread upon their high places. The Lord is our shield. The Lord is our help. And we can continue to move forward by the grace of God, for the glory of God, and the ministry of God. Verse 10 focuses back on the desire to be with God's people in God's house, worshiping him. He says, for a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. Basically, I'm going to take some liberties here to kind of give you the idea there. One day, he's saying, the, the psalmist is saying, one day meeting with God's people in God's house is better than a thousand vacations. One day in God's house, worshiping with God's people is better than fishing trips, trips to the zoo, trips to uh, the, the amusement parks, uh, anything else. He, the, in other words, absence in this case made the heart grow fonder. Doesn't always do that, but in this case it did. And so he, he longed for that one day. He even, he even goes to another uh, expression. He says, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. You do realize that the doorkeepers at these uh, high, fancy 
apartment buildings in New York City don't live in those buildings, right? The doorkeeper does not live in the expensive apartments. The doorkeeper does not live in the expensive hotels and motels. They live someplace else. And the psalmist said, even if I can't get on the inside, just to be there at the door is sufficient for me. And so that expresses, again, the longing that he had to be there. And then he compares it, says, I would rather be the doorkeeper than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Satan is always trying to tell us there's, there's a counterfeit out there. Ah, uh, this is true happiness. This is true that. This is true this. And now we find people are suffering because they did not heed the warning to avoid uh, social gatherings. And they wanted to have their party times and others. Now, others who did heed the warning, they've caught this completely by accident. No fault of their own. And some even going to church have caught it in other places because the leadership there did not heed the warnings as well. But we need to understand that God is our protector. One writer says, the text literally reads, I had rather be a doorkeeper at the threshold of God's house and never be able to enter therein than to do on the inside of the tent of the wicked. Verse 10, for a day in thy house is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Spurgeon said regarding this, God's worst is better than the devil's best. Spurgeon said, God's worst is better than the devil's best. Living in a humble position in God's house is better than living a good life, so to speak, with the wicked. And then we see uh, that the Lord in the temple, what the Lord meant to the psalmist. Uh, God is the light and protector in verse 11. He says, for the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, bless is the man that trusteth in thee. God is his light. He gives grace and glory. God will give you grace and glory. God will give you guidance and direction. God is the giver of all good things. The psalmist says, happy are those who trust in you. Psalm 34 says, the young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. And along those lines, um, if you are having financial problems as a church member, reach out to us, and uh, the church has means to be able to help you for that. We also put on the church website the link for how to file for unemployment uh, compensation if you need that. Uh, but uh, we don't want to hear that any of our church members have gone hungry or having problems. Uh, we have people who are willing to run errands for those who cannot get out. And so uh, God has made us a church family. We can still minister one another to that. In, Psalm, uh, in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9, it says, But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Heaven is going to be so wonderful compared to this. And even better than heaven, if that's possible, will be the new heavens and the new earth and the new Jerusalem. This is not our home, my friends. We are just passing through. In Romans chapter 8, verse 32, the apostle Paul said, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? And so let us remember that the blessed person is the one who delights to worship God in his house. And these three weeks of absence hopefully has spurred that delight in your heart. How important is it to you to be able to come to the house of God and worship with God's people? I hope this has just spurred that on, that desire, and you're looking forward to that. Do you desire to meet with God and God's people uh, in God's house? Are you reaping the spiritual benefits for uh, con consistently meeting with the Lord in the house of the Lord, such as happiness and strength, comfort and spiritual protection? Would you rather serve the Lord as a doorkeeper or would you rather dwell with the wicked in their tent? Do you think the Lord is your provider or protector or is your hope in the government? I hope your hope is not in the government. Uh, you can see how the bickering and the finger pointing has been going on. Uh, we need to trust in the Lord. Uh, do you know and believe that the Lord has your best interest in mind? God has a plan for allowing this to spread. 
Of course, we know from uh, Ezekiel and other passages that these things are designed to cause people to look to the Lord. Unfortunately, we're not seeing any of that reported in the news. I'm sure it's happening in some places, but certainly the news is not reporting it or making it known to us. Are you trusting in the Lord? Or are you trusting in your wealth and in your ingenuity? If we were able to meet together, we would conclude this morning with the, uh, the hymn, Abide With Me. Let me just read the words with you. Abide with me, fast falls the even tide. The darkness deepens, Lord, with me abide. When other helpers fail and comfort flee, help of the helpless, oh, abide with me. Swift to its close ebbs out life's little day. Earth's joys grow dim, its glories pass away. Change and decay in all around I see. O oh, thou who changest not, abide with me. I need thy presence every passing hour. What but thy grace can foil the tempter's plow? Who like thyself may guide and stay can be through cloud and sunshine, O oh, abide with me. I fear no foe with thee at hand to bless. Ills have no weight and tears no bitterness. Where is death's sting? Where the grave thy victory? I triumph still if thou abide with me. Hold thou thy cross before my closing eyes. Shine through the gloom and point me to the skies. Heaven's morn morning breaks and earth's vain shadows flee. In life, in death, O Lord, abide with me. Father, we are thankful for this opportunity to gather together remotely through this uh, video hookup. Lord, obviously it would be our preference to dwell together in the house of the Lord, to worship together in the house of the Lord. And Lord, we would ask that you would stay this pandemic so that your people can gather together again to worship you and to praise you. Help us, Lord, to find creative ways to minister to one another and to your people. In Jesus' name, amen. We look forward to seeing you again, and we love you. May God's blessing be upon you.